All right, welcome back everybody. So this week I have a super special treat. The EnviroCat 100 hardener that can be used in all of Envirolax coatings, but we're gonna specifically look at the 170 primer and the 200 top coat in a refinishing situation. Let's get to it. So before we get into the video, I want to talk about how I set this up. Um, what I have here is a lot of people know about the 2K isolator from ICNS that Rob Ganeri sells, which I will be having him on uh, the show here soon. And what I did was a comparison between the 170 and the Ilva on a cherry door. You can see that um, it's a very dark color. And then on the back, I did the 200 primer and we're gonna look at the results by adding the hardener to it. Now the hardener is 5% for the primer and 10% for the top coat. And I gotta tell you, it really takes this stuff up to another level. So let's get into the testing. All right, so I want to talk about how I prepped this. All I did was scuff this with 400 um, sandpaper. I did not sand to a high grit um, because this door was in excellent shape. Um, so this is just a sand to uh, 400, and then I want to see what the adhesion's like. So let's take a look at each one here. So I have a cross hatch on each one of these here, and I've already done several of these just because I was curious. So let's look at the ICNS isolator first. And on that one, we got absolutely no pull. Um, this stuff is crazy. I mean, you can't even really pick at this at all. All right. So let's look at the Envirolac, which is a pigmented. Um, and let's see what we get here. All right. So the Envirolac, um, we're pulling the wood fibers up out of the wood, as you can see there. And then we're picking up some of the leftover from where I cut it. So impressive on the Envirolac for um, adhesion. Now let's take a look at the MAR resistance between the two of them. All right, so that one, super hard. Um, I am kind of scraping off the surface of that. Um, let's take a look at the Envirolac. All right, not even being able to mar that one at all. There we go, We're getting a little bit of scraping. So if we look at these, um, slightly better adhesion with the Isolator than the Envirolac, but the Envirolac has better mar resistance and scratch resistance than the Isolator is gonna have underneath it. So let's flip it over on the back and look at the Envirolac 200. Now I've got a bunch of scratch marks and everything on here. So I have this side that's unsanded and then this side I sanded to 400. And what I'm curious is, is if we're gonna see a difference between the two. So I'm gonna pick a new spot here that we're gonna work from. And we're going to do the unsanded side first. Uh, we're gonna do, uh, the scratch or mar resistance of it to see if we can peel the coating off. And as you can see, we are denning the wood on unsanded, okay? There was no scratch put to this whatsoever. So with the hardener added to it, the adhesion is off the chain. Um, and this is over a conversion varnish. No sanding, mind you. Okay, so crosshatch adhesion on unsanded. All right, we ripped actually some of the fibers of the wood off of it. So the adhesion is amazingly well. Probably, I would say, the same as the isolator on the other side, okay? So let's take a look at the sanded side and see what we get here with this one. Oh, yeah, nothing. I'm just denting the wood on this one. I can't even get anything, and I'm pressing down extraordinarily hard. So this is with a 400 scratch. Okay, let's look at the crosshatch adhesion. 
Okay, again, we basically ripped the fibers out of the wood. So we actually ripped the CV up off the wood. So definitely better if you sand, obviously. But again, this is just a scuff with 400. So one other thing I want to note with the 200 uh, that people have had problems with with the Envirolac and Renner and some of the other coatings is the burnishing. All right, so this is a tin sheen. And I'm going to rub my fingernail on it. No fingernail burnishing whatsoever on it. So adding the hardener will take away the burnishing effect. Now, one interesting thing to note, you see where I have this stuff like it's completely peeled off. It takes a couple of days before it actually reaches full adhesion. Um, I actually IR cured this. And after it, I let it cool down. And until two days later, I could just pull this off. So this is dry for like four or five days now. And it's a substantial difference. So it takes a while actually for these coatings to actually grab on the surface. Um, let me give you my closing thoughts. And we're going to talk, uh, talk about a couple things that is going on here. All right. So these are some very interesting findings. And I have been a proponent over the um, last year because of the systems I've been using that we need to sand more ag aggressively. So like at least a 180 or a 150 scratch. However, with these hardeners that we have now, um, I think what I'm seeing here is that we don't have to sand as much as we thought. Um, I know that's going to open up a lot of can of worms, but you know, you can do these tests for yourself. I mean, this was unsanded on a conversion varnish. Okay. That is as good as what you're going to get with vinyl sealer or primers. If you sand to 180. So if you have the right situation, uh, you're dealing with a dark color, then all this dye migration and bleed through and all this stuff goes out the window because basically all you really need to do is scuff. Now, my good friend Denny Johns has been saying this for a very long time. And I will also tell you though that not every product in every situation can you do this and get away with it. You have to test it. So if you're going to do something like this or you're going to use single component products, um, you need to test each system individually on uh, UV conversion varnish and 2K polyurethanes because that's kind of the main thing. Pre-cat lacquers, it's no contest. This stuff's going to stick like crazy to that stuff. Um, also, something very interesting is, is that I was super impressed with the adhesion of the, the 2K primer. That's been one of my issues with water base primers is the adhesion issues. Um, but I think it's interesting that running the top coat by itself with no primer underneath it actually gives you the same results as if you used a 2K isolator. So, um, very interesting findings. Uh, I think if you want to take the Envirolac up a notch, now I didn't do any chemical testing. I'm going to save that for another video, but I primarily wanted to look at refinishing and kind of discuss some of these topics. Um, so in closing, what I'll say is, if you're a refinisher um, and you're looking at the Envirolac products, um, man, this is really hard to pass up. And I mean, essentially, if you had a door like this, you really could scuff it with 400, put two top coats on it and call it done. Or if you're looking for adhesion and more speed, what you could do is put in a light coat of the top coat for your adhesion, then your primer, and then a final top coat. So I'm still testing a lot of these things, and more is going to come out on this. But what I would say is I think that some of us are over sanding, um, and we are going about things the wrong way. Now, I've known this information for a while, but I've just been saving it for a good time, and this was a good time to do this. So we'll continue to look at it. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. You can catch me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok at Eric Reason. 
And remember, guys, test don't guess. We'll see you next week.